When the whole family comes together to watch the game, nobody wants to miss a second of the action to run to the grocery store. With Instacart, you can get all your weekly groceries in as fast as an hour. Less time shopping means more game time. Let's go. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Michael Swain of Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW show, The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by Berg's Auto Group. I am Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. The man across the studio from me is Michael Swain of Fog.net, who left town this weekend and met missed snow again for farm again. Fitz, first of all, I'm very lucky to be in Southern California where it's warm. Mm. Second of all, I leave and you let it snow. It was well, what, what's going on here? I, it was one of those snows uh, that just started like at one and ended at one. I mean, it just went for 12 hours of just straight snow. It was ridiculous. You can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash the drive show on Twitter at the drive 13. And of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions on our Twitter page. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of The Drive, you can listen to an audio only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of a podcast at both gopowercat.com and fog.net. We start things off with our two minute drill. First segment of the two minute drill sponsored by Vanderbilt's Your Work Boot Center. Well, Fitz, speaking of snow, K State played, played Iowa State on a snow covered field in Manhattan. But K-State lost to Iowa State 42-35. to This was a bad ending to a good regular season for K-State, but Fitz, how strange was this game? I have never covered a game even remotely close to how strange this one was. Everything you know about football apparently goes out the window when the field is covered in snow. And this snow was not particularly heavy, but so persistent that it just kept piling up on the field as the game went. They couldn't really clear the field because of the playing surface underneath and they were afraid it might freeze up. So they just kind of took blowers and blew the yard lines out and the hash marks out. It it was crazy. By the end of the game, there was probably four inches of snow standing on the field and guys were playing in it. And apparently, I don't know, Iowa State had better shoes. Iowa State is more uh, snow acclimated being in the great Northlands of Iowa. I'm not sure what happened. But Kansas State looked not slower than Iowa State. It looked about three steps slower than Iowa State. Here's some stats from the game. Stats that usually add up to a big victory. K-State had 32 first downs. Iowa State had 10. K-State ran 102 plays. I forgot to write down Iowa State's number, but I think it was 35. They ran 35 offensive plays in the entire game. Uh, Kansas State had the ball for 42 minutes, a little more than that. And Iowa State a little less than 18. But Abu Sama, Abu Sama, the freshman running back from uh, Iowa State, who hadn't played much this year because their first two running backs didn't make the trip, only carried the ball 16 times for 276 yards, averaging 17 yards a carry. They scored six touchdowns on six different scoring drives that totaled 16 plays. There were so many blown defenses by K-State, it became comical, pure comedy. I don't know if the players or the scheme or both or the footwear or there was a Farmageddon hex on the K-State defense, but it was awful. Don't blame the K-State offense. They moved the ball. They they gained almost 500 yards. They kept the ball in a way that you want to keep it. And yet they got outscored by a touchdown and lost the game. 
Michael, it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. 42 <sighs> points on 35 plays. It's insanity. It's like made up stats. And it's almost like if it's watching the fourth quarter, that's what I was able to catch. You watch the defense for K-State and it looked like in mad and when you turn down like the, the difficulty level and that obviously makes them slower, not react as fast. Like that's what it looked like. It was a crazy game to see. And I'm very impressed by Iowa State, but also this is a game that K-State definitely should have won. Should have won. K-State yeah. finishes at eight and four, as does KU. And Kansas went into Cincinnati and blew out the Bearcats 49-16 to cement an eight-win season. Michael, how dominant was KU in this game and how special of a season has this been for the Jayhawks? Yeah, incredibly dominant. And look, Fitz, I was a little concerned about KU. The way they came out and started that game was not great. And you think about the month that Kansas has had going all the way back to that Oklahoma game that took so much emotional energy out of this team. And they didn't start well, but then Kobe Bryant made, I think, maybe one of the best interceptions I've yeah. seen in my time covering college football, like a one-handed snag that was just an incredible athletic play, an incredible concentration play. And from there, KU just stepped on the gas and just went and went and went. And I think you saw Cincinnati uh, start to quit towards the end of the game where guys are starting to try, you know, trying to start fights in the second half. And KU ended up playing their third string quarterback, technically fourth string, and Ben Easter's at the end of the game. So Look, this is the perfect end for Kansas for a season that I think a lot of people will reflect on five, six years down the road as being an incredibly special one. And one that I think KU performed really well in trying circumstances, right? You imagine Jason Bean being the guy that starts most of the games for Kansas. And we go back to this time last year, Fitz, and I think the biggest offseason addition Kansas had was Jason Bean deciding to return to Kansas. I can't imagine what this season would have looked like if Jason Bean was A, playing somewhere else in college, or B, just moved on from college football overall and he deserves a ton of credit right he's improved so much over his time at Kansas he had the incredible two runs he had some incredible throws on Saturday I think he's the epitome of what I think this Lance Leipold wants this program to be selfless right he came back even though knowing he was going to be the backup a guy that worked on his craft and improved over time and as a result he gets to reap the rewards of all of that work so I'm incredibly impressed by this KU team and their resiliency this season you know this is a team that you look ahead to next year they can return a lot I'm sure we'll talk about that in the coming weeks and months but a perfect way to end this season and for KU look I believe in momentum fits in recruiting and they now have an eight win season a huge dominant win to now go and hit the recruiting trail for the next three weeks try and cap off this really good high school class and get those transfer portal additions that can help raise the ceiling of the 2024 team has uh has Cincinnati never seen the zone read because they look totally baffled where's the ball it, that, that was crazy. Weird games. Weird. Yeah, they're a terribly coached team, too. I'm not too sure if that Satterfield tire is going to work out. Well, look at Louisville. He mm. left Louisville, and now they're playing for the ACC championship. Huh. Yeah, well, a different championship that will be played on Saturday is the Big 12 championship, and that's going to be Oklahoma State against Texas. Oklahoma State punched their ticket after a wild game against BYU. But, Fitz, give us your read on this game. What stands out to you about this contest? Well, look, I, at the right part of the season, Oklahoma State could have played with Texas. They had that magical month in which they beat K-State, KU, and Oklahoma. And now... They're not a very good football team. They lost at UCF. They barely hung out at home against BYU. Those are two of the worst teams in the conference. And Texas, well, Michael, Texas finally looked like Texas should look. I mean, they absolutely dominated a pretty decent team from Tech. Uh, it, was, it was absolutely put your foot on the throat and just stand there. And that's what they needed to do. And see, this is Oklahoma State's problem. Texas needs to look good. They need to look dominant. They're not just playing to win right now. They're seventh in the playoff poll. Maybe they'll move up, I don't know. But they're good enough to get into that field of four, and they need to show it because they haven't been showing it. They let K-State hang around. They let TCU hang around. They let Iowa State hang around. All pretty good teams, but they, they are so talented. This is one of the most talented teams I've seen in the last 20 years in the Big 12. So, yeah, I, I think they belong in the field of four. They only have one loss to Oklahoma. That's not a bad loss, and, and I think they're going to absolutely route Oklahoma State. Just route them. 
this is the type of game, right? You look at Ollie Gordon and say, you need to have an iconic performance. Right. He has been so good for Oklahoma State this year. And I think you saw the times when Oklahoma State looked at its best, right? It was Ollie Gordon dominating. And this is the type of game where you need him to come out and show what he can do. I think this Texas team has a mistake in them and maybe Ollie Gordon's the guy that can bring it out of them. But I agree with you, Fitz. This Texas team played to their potential against Texas Tech. And you look at this game and say, it's going to have to look similar to that Oklahoma game, right, where Texas lost, where they lost a turnover battle, they made some mistakes in key moments, and that's how Oklahoma was able to win. That, for me, is the pathway for Oklahoma State to win this game. Yeah. But, Fitz, I think you're right. Texas is not going to come out here and have a lackadaisical performance. They know if they win and dominate, there's a strong chance they might make the college football playoff considering the other games are going to happen around the country. This is a fascinating matchup because nobody has ran on Texas this year. That run defense is incredible. And Ali Gordon's incredible. I have a feeling that Texas run defense is going to win. We'll see. Now, a quick look at our poll question results. The poll questions are brought to you by Midland Exteriors. Love the home you live in. Call today for a free estimate. All right, Fitz. Last week's question was, has was the Big 12 close. handled the confusion around the Big 12 title tiebreakers well? And unsurprisingly, the correct answer was also what the fans decided, which was no. And that got 95% of the vote. You know what I've learned here? We have 5% of Oklahoma State fans watching this show. <laughs> that's what I learned from this. Here's this week's question. Who wins the Big 12 title game? Boy, that's a complex one. A, Oklahoma State, B, Texas. Vote on our Twitter page at the Drive 13 All right, that will do it for this half of the two-minute drill. But we'll be right back with more on KU and K-State on the Drive. Selling a little or a lot? <coughs> Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast welcome back to the drive fueled by brigsauto.com welcome back as we continue our two-minute drill and the lesson that if you wear a black shirt wear something more contrast to it Looks like I'm a ninja with this shirt on. Anyhow, this segment of the Two Minute Drill is sponsored by Copeland Insurance Agency, part of your community for more than 60 years. All right, Fitz, K-State basketball went to the Hamas, I'm jealous, and yeah. beat Providence before losing to Miami with former Wildcat Nigel Pack leading the way in the finals. Fitz, was this another loss to a talented team, or are there reasons to be concerned about K-State? Yeah, a little bit of both, actually. And, and it's early in the season. And, and Jerome Tang might have bitten off a little bit much for his team, uh, especially since, you know, Naquan Tomlin is still not with them. It looks like they're progressing to maybe a December return. Uh, and they've got another injury out there that um, is uh, a problem for them with Quez Glover, one of their backups. Uh, they get to the Miami game, and um, it, it, it was they were shorthanded. They had to play without D.D. Ames, who was suspended for getting hit in the face. Don't ask. Um, and then uh, they just looked completely outmanned. Plus, Nigel Pack became Nigel Pack. This guy had been shooting 25% from three this year, but we know that isn't who he is. And he absolutely lit up K-State. I think he ended up 7 of 12 and hit some of those absurd ones that Nigel Pack can hit. Miami's really good. They're long and athletic. They're like a better version of that USC team we saw 
play K-State out in Las Vegas. And this is going to be an issue, and Naquan will answer some of that for them, but not probably enough. Uh, they've got a long ways to go. They're still piecing it together, and they'll find their way. But I don't think we're going to see a repeat of the magic of last season. They just don't seem to have the same ingredients. But I think at the end of the day, this is going to end up being a pretty good team, and they have progressed a lot. But they better get ready over the next couple weeks because Villanova is on the horizon coming in for the Big East Challenge. And I watched some Villanova this weekend, Michael. They're long and athletic and exactly the kind of team that has been giving K-State trouble. We'll see. We'll see how good K-State turns out. Uh, but I'll say this. The guy you just saw there, Cam Carter, is playing at an extremely high level. He's kind of been their guy. Uh, and Tyler Perry, their transfer from North Texas, really needs to settle in and get his shot on track because he's been pretty bad in first halves. He ends up the game with, you know, double figures and good-looking stats, but he misses a lot of shots when the game's in doubt in the first half. They have progress to make. I think Jerome Tang and his staff will get him there, but how far down the road there is is the question. How good will this team be? Well, we're going to find out. Yeah, it's always going to be a challenge, right, when you lose star power like K-State lost, right. and you have to find different ways to replace that. And it's going to take time, and I think you're right, Fitz. I think these marks along the way, Villanova being one that's coming up, are going to be really huge benchmarks, I think, in learning experiences for a team that really does need to gel before January comes around. Yep. I mean, they only have a couple guys that played significant minutes back, mm -hmm. um, so they really are reinventing almost like they did the year prior. KU basketball went 2-1 and one in the Maui Invitational, which wasn't in Maui. Uh, it's, I don't understand. And finished in third place. But what did you learn from the Jayhawks during Feast Week? Yeah, I think we learned uh, several things about this KU team. First and foremost, what the Achilles heel of this team could look like this year. You saw it against Marquette, right? They've got people at the point of attack who can really put pressure on Dewan Harris. And with El Marco Jackson taking time to acclimate at Kansas, like most freshmen do, it's putting a lot of pressure on Dewan to create. And when he's not creating, it goes to Kevin McCullough. And we, at this point in time, I think know what Kevin McCullough is. I think he can be a very good scorer for Kansas this year. He can create a lot of assists for Kansas this year, but when he handles the ball at such a high volume against a high pressure defense like Marquette was, it's gonna create an, a situation where mistakes are gonna happen. And I think as a result, you saw KU get sped up because Dewan Harris wasn't controlling the pace of the game. And they didn't have a guy like Jalen Wilson who can dribble the ball up, take his time, get a good look, slow the game down, right? When you have a big man like Hunter Dickinson, it's dependent on the guards to get him the ball in a position to have success. And if those guards are sped up, throwing the ball over the place, it's kind of hard to get to your big man. So I think for me, you look at Marquette, they're a very specific team, right? They've got a very mobile five man. They've got wings that can, uh, guard you and also shoot from the perimeter so it's a team that you're not going to face very often but if you want to look at Kansas being a national title contender you're going to play teams that are athletic that have really good guards that can defend and those are going to be some things that as Big 12 play unfolds you're going to have to watch for this KU team now going to the Tennessee game I think for me I learned the most about Jamari McDowell KU is still trying to find who the best fifth player is with those starting four guys and Jamari McDowell for my money looked like the guy that fits the best with those players we've seen Bill Self do in the past right Landon Lucas was plugged into a team and helped bring out the best of those perimeter players and for me I look at what Jamari McDowell does he's readily available to catch the ball he wants to shoot he wants to bring effort and energy and rebound and just do his job that's exactly what you need when you know what you're getting from those other four players. So, learned a lot about Kansas during Feast Week. We'll learn a lot more when UConn comes to town this weekend. I dig that court. I like that court a lot. That was pretty. And now we step out of bounds. Out of Bounds is brought to you by Dare's Corner Market. We love local and we are local for you. Fitz, I really want to get your opinion on this because yeah. I think it's really interesting. Um, Oregon State's John, Jonathan Smith was the head coach at his alma mater where he was a, a star quarterback. This weekend, he left Corvallis to take the Michigan State head coaching vacancy. Fitz, does this show how backwards college football is getting with realignment? Yeah, because Oregon State's a better program as of now. They don't have the history, but he had it going pretty good there at his alma mater. And it became untenable for him to stay there because they're not going to be Power 5. Now, it still needs to be played out how the Pac-12 will become the Pac-2 for a while. And it is keeping the name. Uh, but they're going to eventually expand or merge. We'll find out what that plan is. But they are stepping back in, in kind of the pecking order of college football. And to go to Michigan State, 
in that mess right now, that says how desperately he wanted out of there because he doesn't want to be part of that. It's a shame that a program like this that has had success, they just are sinking millions upon millions into their stadium from their alumni, yeah. and now they lose their seat at the table. It almost happened at K-State, so I'm well aware of what the ramifications are, and it's not good, and I don't blame him. Uh, but also, Michael, there's going to be a lot of interesting coaching jobs open. I mean, the entire Big Ten West, what was the West, could be open. I mean, that's just a trash division. And mm-hmm. Texas A&M is going to be loads of entertainment because nobody wants that job in that mess. So, yeah, I feel bad for Oregon State. I really do. Yeah, I do too. And I can't imagine, right, if you're a fan of Oregon State, like how you feel, yeah. right? Your star quarterback that came back and made the program relevant says, sorry, I can't do this here anymore. That's got to be really hard to take. Yep, I agree. I agree. Now let's hear from our fans. Our fan question is sponsored by Medlark. Retirement awaits in Manhattan where you can live your way every day our fan question is what bowl game should KU or K-State fans be on the lookout for thank you Danielle and Topeka Michael what do you got for KU sounds like first responders bowl or maybe the Texas bowl Um, first responders bowl is on the 26th of December in Phoenix the Texas bowl is I believe December 28th in Houston yep and Kansas State kind of looks like right as of now even though they lost that the Pop-Tarts bowl which is the Orlando bowl that changes names every year uh, is interested in K-State, maybe to play North Carolina State. If not that, maybe the Tax Act, Texas Bowl or the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. They do not, and I think K is the same way, want to go back to the Liberty Bowl. No. Nope. So that's uh, off the table. Well, remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. When we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. And there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash 247 and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, permitted parishes only, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, or Wyoming. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia or call 1-800-522- 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York or visit oasas.ny.gov slash gambling. Standard text messaging rates apply. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Utah, and other states where prohibited. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. It's time to head down the home stretch of this week's show. And now let's take a look at our predictions. Predictions are brought to you by Kites, meeting your friends at Kites since 1954. Remember to make your weekly predictions on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. Last week's results, everyone went two and one, except for one person. We're not gonna name who that was. Oh, Fitz. Very close race though this year. As we get to, you know, kind of the holiday break coming up, we got a competition. And now let's see what we're going to do this week. we got three championship games 
on our picks. Oklahoma State is a 13 and a half point dog to Texas. Does Texas win by two touchdowns or more? I think they do, yeah. Fitz. Yeah. I think Michael would take, we would both take them at about 21. I, I think, think so. it's going to get ugly. Yeah. Next up, let's see what the ACC's got cooking. Yeah. Florida State plays Louisville. Remember, Florida State, Jordan Travis, the quarterback, is not playing. Um, Florida State still, though, is favored by four and a half points. I'm taking Louisville. Give me the points. Who are you taking, Fitz? Uh, I, I will take Florida State. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, Florida State barely beat its rival, Florida, on Saturday, and Louisville lost to its rival, Kentucky. Those were two mid-level SEC teams. That's all you need to know about the ACC. And our last game of the week is the Pac-12. This is a dandy. Oregon and Washington, but Oregon is a shocking nine-and-a-half point favorite. I'm surprised by that, but Oregon's pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna, I feel like Vegas knows something. I'll take the Ducks. Fitz, I was surprised when I saw this, and my first inclination is to, I'm going to take the points, so I'm going to take the points, but that's a scary number. It is. Beating Washington by 10 or more. Oh, well, you take Washington, I'll take Oregon. You'll be right. I'll be making jokes next week. Again, make your picks on our Twitter page at the Drive 13 Now it's time for our On the Clock segment. On the Clock is sponsored by Carpet One, by Local for a Strong Local Community. Michael Swain of Fog.net starts us off. Fitz, I want to talk about Lance Leipold and organization, right? You've seen Kansas become a much more consistent program under Leipold, and I think one moment post-game shows you exactly why Kansas is where it's at. Leipold was asked about KU's plan for the next few weeks before KU goes to a bowl game. Leipold said, well, we don't know yet, right? Once we figure out the bowl game, we'll act. But he said he has four plans that have already been formulated by his general manager, Rob Ionello, and then when they get the bowl next week, they'll act and put it into place. Those are the type of things. The attention to detail and being prepared are the reasons why Kansas football is where it is at the moment. That's very interesting. Let's talk about Will Howard. If you uh, watch the game, Will played as well as I think you could expect someone to play in those kind of conditions, particularly for a passing quarterback. But he didn't run quite the way you would expect either. But I'll say this. Will was a warrior throughout this season. Did he play well all the time? No. No. Uh, but he often gave K-State a chance to win when it honestly probably shouldn't have won. We saw that last week at Kansas. But I think Will Howard just played his last football game for Kansas State. Maybe not his last college game, as we're hearing talk of the transfer portal. But Will Howard's been a really good quarterback for K-State, but the Avery Johnson era is apparently here. Hmm. That's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We'll see you next week and all week on social media. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.